I am Miss Williams and today we are going to be doing the gummy fossil experiment. So what do you think about when you hear the word fossil? You probably think of a BAM dinosaur bone or maybe you think of a million year old organism known as a trilobite or maybe you think of an orthocereus which is a really neat fossil that's engraved in black stone or maybe probably don't think about this one, you think of fossilized turtle poop. Yep, fossilized turtle poop can also be considered a fossil because it's a remain of a organism. So in today's experiment, we are going to see what, how can something be a fossil? So let's talk about it a little bit. So what is a fossil? A fossil is an ancient remain of a plant or an animal that has been saved down in Earth's Crust. So not only can animals be fossils, but plants can be fossils too. Scientists or paleontologists study fossils to learn about ancient life on Earth. So fossils help scientists learn what was life like on Earth a million years ago. Because life on Earth a million years ago looks a lot different than what it does now. One of the ways it was different is that there was a lot of water on planet Earth. Most of our planet millions of years ago was made of water. So fossils need some water to become a fossil. So these are some examples of some real life fossils. So the first step of becoming a fossil is an organism, a plant or an animal has to die. The next step is they're gonna get, they're gonna have to get covered by water and dirt very quickly. So in our experiment today, we are gonna kind of emulate this process. So a fossil first is going to die. They're gonna get buried by sand and water because earth was mostly water. So when an animal died, it mostly sank to the bottom of a river or an ocean. And then the sand and the water can continue to cover up the fossil. And then storms may have happened and brought in more dirt and sediment and it covered it up. And that fossil has continued to get buried and buried and buried with extra sand and dirt all on top of it till eventually the sun starts drying out all that that got covered by the sediments that got covered that covered the fossil, eventually the sun and earth is going to dry that and that fossil is down here and it has many layers of dirt stacked hard on top of it until paleontologists start digging around to get to this organism. Or the earth can have an earthquake and maybe the fossil will rise up. So in this video, we're going to kind of see how can something become a fossil? So in this experiment, you're going to need bread, gummy bears or gummy worms, or even both, and a stack of books. So bread, and for your bread, you can get as many slices as you want, but I recommend that you, are, that you need about three slices of bread for this experiment. So you probably have this laying around in your kitchen at home. The next thing, as I said, you're going to need gummy bears and maybe some gummy worms. And then you need a stack of books. So the bread is going to be like the bottom of the ocean floor. So you're gonna take one of your slices of bread and we're going to pretend it's the bottom of a lake bed, it's the bottom of the ocean floor. If you've ever went swimming or you've been to the beach, you know that it's very sandy and dirty. So the bottom, this first piece of bread is going to be the ocean. We're then, going to start taking some of our gummy bears and they are going to die. They're going to be our dead organisms. When an animal dies in water, they sink right to the bottom. So we're going to put some gummy bears in the corners of our bread and you are going to want to push down so they kind of stick. And obviously I'm showing you on camera at home, I would lay it flat and you can stick some right here. You can even go ahead and stick a gummy worm maybe in the middle. Okay, so the gummies act as our dead organisms. They fell to the bottom of the ocean, which is our stack of bread. So as our gummy bear is laying on our bread, more sand and sediments and dirt is starting to come and it's going to cover those fossils up. So you're going to take your second piece of bread and cover up your dead organisms. And then earth is constantly changing. We have storms. Another layer of dirt and sand is going to come and swish over that layer. So now we have another stack 
of bread that's on top of our dead gummy bears or organisms. So think about when the Dan River or something floods. It constantly pushes water up and then it will constantly go down. So dirt inside of the water beds are constantly moving. And finally, this is a fourth piece of bread. It's gonna come and make another layer of dirt on top of our gummies. So do not eat this gummy sandwich. So this is about four layers thick. You could use more layers of dirt because that's how it works. A fossil dies at the bottom of, bottom of the ocean or our piece of bread and layers of dirt continue to get packed and packed and packed. So once you have that set up, now you're going to need a stack of books or something very heavy because once the dirt covers up the fossils, Earth starts to shift and it gets packed in here very tight. So what we're going to do is we're going to add pressure. Earth is going to add pressure to the ground and you're going to put your books on top. So I'm going to grab my books. And you're going to put them on top of your bread. Now, with this experiment, we know that it takes millions of years for fossils to form. Fossils do not become fossilized and engraved in rock overnight. It takes time. So for this experiment, it is recommended that you wait at least seven days before you reveal your little fossil. But for this experiment today, you could also just do a day. Okay, so for this experiment, I'm going to show you what your bread will look like if you let it sit overnight. So we're going to move, you're going to want to move this experiment if you're going to let it sit overnight. You're going to want to move it to an area where um, nothing can get to it, so no animals or anything like that. So I'm going to move my bread and my books over here. And then I'm gonna show you what it looks like once you uncover it. So when paleontologists start digging for fossils, they have to be very, very careful. Otherwise, they could cut the rock and cut the fossil underneath. So once you have done this, this is about a day old, the bread starts to get very, very hard. And we're going to slowly dig into our bread and slowly peel back the layers of the bread to reveal our fossil. So we're going to make sure we have it right. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and slowly, I've actually made two different kinds. So we're gonna move this over here. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure we have it on the right side. So you're gonna slowly move back your piece of bread now fossils are very fragile because they're so old. The ground is very gentle. So you wanna be very careful. When you take one piece of bread, it feels very hard and dry. And then I'm going to remove the second layer of dirt. I'm digging in, I'm a paleontologist. And we're gonna see what our gummy bear fossils look like. Now, as I said, it would be really cool if you could let your bread and your gummy set for about seven days to really get the effect of what it will look like. You gotta be very careful because when paleontologists find fossils, they have to slowly dig the dirt around the fossil. So there's that one, and we're gonna do this one. And again, I kinda did a little cheat sheet. I wanted you to see what it would look like. So look what it looks like when I get to the very bottom of the bread, you can see all the in imprints of the fossils. There is the print of the worm body and the print of the gummy bear bodies. And let me show you. So once you remove it, it looks just like a trace of a fossil on the piece of bread. You can see the outline of the worm and the gummies and you can see how thick. And this is just a day. So can you imagine seven days or a million years that it takes fossils to fossilize and look like rock? So when a paleontologist finds the outline or like a stamp or an imprint of a fossil, it's called a mold fossil. 
when the fossil, when the paleontologist finds the whole body of the organism that passed away, so our gummy bear passed away, this would be called a body fossil if the whole body was still intact. And I will tell you, your gummy bears feel really sticky and gooey if you let them sit overnight. So, once paleontologists find their fossils and their imprints, what they will do is they will have special tools and they will cut around the rock. In our case, the rock is the, bed, the bread because the sand and all those layers of sand that piled on the fossil turned really hard. So what paleontologists will do is they'll cut around it and they'll cut the little fossil out of the rock. And then you can see the imprint of the creature that used to live there. So I hope you enjoyed this experiment. It's really cool to see an imprint of what fossils look like and kind of get an understanding that fossils are still yet to be discovered. Um, Earth is constantly changing, so sometimes people stumble across a fossil um, that we didn't know exist. So, like I said in this experiment, you just need bread, gummies, and books, and then you're on your way to discovering some fossils and creating a fossil. So, I hope you enjoyed this video and this experiment.